This is question 15 from the mid-semester exam, and it was a trickier one than it looks. So it says, event, events A, B, and C have some respective probabilities, and it's given A, B, and C there. Given that A and B are disjoint, B and C are independent, and the probability of A and C is 0 0.1, which of the following is correct value of P, uh, the, of the probability of A or B, given C. So the first thing to note is that that is the probability of A or B. A or B, you can think about it all in brackets, given C. So it's not, as I first looked at it, A or B given C. It's probability of A or B given C. And I'm told that that's the only thing that makes sense um, in stats notation if you were to try and write A or B given C, that doesn't actually make sense, that's nonsensical. So, okay, let's talk about how to actually approach this question. I'm going to delete a few things here. The way to approach this question, it's tempting to sort of start with the things that you're given, start with these, and try and somehow fumble your way to there, but you'll end up going in lots of circles. The only real sensible way to approach it that's likely to yield an answer is to start with this, and then see if you can expand it by writing it in, different, in a different way that will hopefully show up some terms that we can work out and then we'll solve it from there. So let's see what we can do. So we're looking for the probability of A union B, so A or B is A union B given C. Now, you, you'll remember what A, uh, we can rewrite, just as an aside, I'm going to write this in a different colour as I can. So just as an aside here, if we want the probability of A union B, then we know that's probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. So that'll give us the, the union or gives us the sum of both minus the duplicated part, so whichever part was uh, counted twice. So the overlapping bit was counted twice, so we remove one of those and we've got our union. So the exact same thing stands when you've got a conditional probability. So this is actually the same thing as the probability of A given C plus the probability of B given C minus the probability of A union B sorry, intersect B given C. Does that help? It doesn't look like it because we've now got three terms instead of one, but actually it does. Let's see if we can split each one of these down even further. So first the first term. Let's look at this one. What's the probability of A given C? Well, that's equal to the probability of, well, put it this way, we know that it's C, so we want the probability of C on the numerator. So we've already been told it's C, and now given that we know it's C, what's the probability that it was also A? So that's the probability of A and C given the probability of C. So the probability of both divided by the probability of the one that we already knew. And that's going to help us because we're actually given the value for the for A and B. What are we given? A and C, this one here. So we're given this one, and we're given that one, probability of C. So that's going to be equal to, oops, that's going to be equal to um, 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.4. Let's look at the second term. Let's look at the second term in purple. So let's look at this one. So the probability of B given C, what clues have we got to do that? Well, we're given that B and C are independent. And what that means, that it doesn't matter what C is, it doesn't affect B. So the probability, if, if these are independent, then the probability of B and C is just equal to the probability of B. And we're given that as 0 0.1. So that, that's by definition independence. If we're told that one thing happened, we're told that C happens, does that change the probability that B happened? No, it doesn't. 
therefore they're independent. Okay. Um, last one, the probability of A intersect B given C. I'm not going to draw a line down here because this is the easiest one. And you can probably spot that this is going to be zero. The reason being that we're told that A and B are disjoint. And so it doesn't matter whether a C is, the C part of this is irrelevant because A intersect B is zero. So the whole thing is zero. So all we need now is the probability of A given C plus the probability of B given C. So it's, um, uh, let's see. So the whole thing is equal to 0 0.1 over 0 0.4, which is 0 0.25 plus 0 0.1, which equals 0 0.35, and we're done. So it looks like a really tricky one at the start, but as long as you start with what you already know you're trying to find and expand it out, the clues fall neatly into place. So I hope that one helped.